If we learn anything from Black Mirror Season 4, it's never let anyone near your temple with some kind of tech implant. But another thing that's becoming clear is that creator Charlie Brooker is really interested in the idea of digital copies. That is, digitally replicating a human consciousness and housing it somewhere else outside of our body. The prevalence of this idea in Black Mirror leads us to wonder, why is Brooker so interested in sentient digital copies? And are these sentient copies really people who deserve the same rights as we do? That's slavery. It's a little melodramatic, isn't it? No, she thought she was real. Black Mirror makes a persuasive case that these questions could be more relevant to our future than we can even imagine. Before we go on, this video is sponsored by SwiftRickGear.com. They've got really cool Rick and Morty merch, so if you're a fan of that show and who isn't, check out our link in the description below to browse their beautiful hoodies and more. Now, back to Black Mirror. Right, uh, so you won't remember Xerox machines. Do you know what a photocopier is? What? First, let's look at the range of digital copies we meet in Black Mirror. In White Christmas, the idea is given the name Cookies. You're a simulated brain full of code uh, stored in this little widget we call a cookie. We meet Greta, a cookie who's been created to be a slave doing housework for her original self. And Joe, a cookie who's been created against the original Joe's will so the police can extract a confession for the original Joe's crimes. The police then proceed to torture Cookie Joe as retribution for original Joe's sins. Just change the time settings. Cracked him up to a thousand years a minute. As a proper sentence. In San Junipero, we see elderly people uploading their consciousnesses onto a cloud, living in new digital bodies. In Hang the DJ, the copies live inside a dating app, undergoing a test to calculate romantic compatibility for their human originals. In USS Callister, we see Robert Daly making copies of other people's consciousnesses to torture them for petty perceived wrongs and disrespect. Helmsman Packer. Captain. Vanilla latte, skim milk at once. Black Museum gives us Carrie, whose consciousness is eventually trapped in a stuffed monkey, only able to communicate two things. Monkey loves you. Monkey needs a hug. Then we see the convicted murderer Clayton Lee, who may be innocent, condemned to be tortured over and over for the amusement of sadistic visitors. All of these examples range from bright or harmless to unrelentingly dark, but there's a shared moral throughout, and that is that we need to take care and be cautious about all this. A human consciousness needs to have rights, even when it's disconnected from the human body. This area is something that could theoretically become a huge problem, an unregulated wild, wild west, at least if the future pans out in any way like Black Mirror, even if we hope it doesn't. In addition to some of the fun Easter eggs and recurring technologies that tie the Black Mirror universe together, cookies are one of the most recurring elements. We can even track the passage of time between certain episodes based on how the world is responding to cookies and their rights. <laughs> Human rights for cookies. So let's do a timeline of all the episodes that have some version of cookies in them. Shut Up and Dance mentions one smart cookie in an ad, so we see the tech is starting to be developed in that episode. In White Christmas, we're introduced to the cookie, and it clearly doesn't have any rights. Okay, well, have six months. No, no, wait, 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 wait! But cookies are held accountable for the original person's crimes. So Joe's copy can give a confession that holds up in court as a confession from the original Joe. This is interesting because the copy develops legal responsibility before it develops rights, which suggests the cookie's legal identity or personhood would first come about not so the cookie could have positive rights, but so it could be held liable for crimes. USS Callister probably takes place after White Christmas because it seems to be easier to make the cookies. At least it's something that a highly talented individual can do on his own. We know Hang the DJ and Callister happen close to each other in time because Elena, the receptionist in Callister, is using the dating app from Hang the DJ. Neither of these episodes mention the idea of the cookies having any rights. Daily could be copying people illegally, but the copies aren't aware of having rights as they don't try to alert the police. And in Hang the DJ, it's presumably still legal in this world for the app to create lots of copies of your consciousness and then delete slash kill them at the end. In Hated in the Nation, the newsfeed on 
on UKN tells us that cookies have been granted human rights by the European court. San Junipero seems to take place after there are rights for a digitally replicated consciousness. We get the sense there's more protection in place as these people make the decision to upload themselves onto the cloud. And the episode's happy ending is possible because this seems to be a regulated world where consciousnesses are kept safe. We also know that San Junipero is not that long before Black Museum, or else the technology of San Junipero is just very enduring, because Nish mentions that it's still going on. Uh, like when they upload old people to the cloud? By the present story in Black Museum, Haynes tells us the cookies now have human rights. A couple of years back, the UN made it illegal to transfer human consciousnesses into limited formats like this. Gotta be able to express at least five emotions for it to be humane, apparently. This is why Carrie's consciousness has to stay trapped in the stuffed monkey she was put into in the pre-rights stage. She's still in there. Be legal to delete her, too, so. Clearly, this world is still getting adjusted to this new personhood for cookies, though. Because even in the flashback stories, we see that this wasn't the case, and the still-living Haynes spent his career abusing various copies. We can gather, then, that for most of the whole Black Mirror timeline, cookies have not enjoyed any protections. Black Museum clearly takes place later than almost all other episodes. It includes references to or artifacts from Callister, Archangel, Crocodile, White Bear, Hated in the Nation, 15 Million Merits, and Shut Up and Dance. This is Kenny. This is Hector. Metalhead is the most future episode in the whole series. We know this because Black Museum contains a news announcement of the creation of those terrifying military dogs. Metalhead doesn't explicitly have cookies in it, but some, like Screen Crush, have even read Metalhead as a possible digital hell. The black and white recalls the black and white of the copy of Clayton in Black Museum. In the episode, we also see a postcard from San Junipero, as if from one digital world to another. So this could be a hellish simulation that digital copies of humans are forced to try to survive in, even as some kind of game or test of the dog technology, or again, as a punishment. Or the extended cloud that San Junipero is part of could have malfunctioned in some way and degenerated into this hell. Meanwhile, if we just read Metalhead as a straight future, the episode is probably the bleakest Black Mirror yet, as a preview of how we could destroy humankind with our machines. The meaning of the San Junipero postcard could also be that those copies of consciousnesses in the San Junipero cloud are the only form of humans that will live on now that the dogs have wiped out all human bodies. Strikingly, two of the main early reasons we see for creating cookies are very dark, slavery and punishment. The unsettling suggestion that follows is that outside of procreation, our most common motivation for bringing others into being is either to use them for our own profit or to hurt them. Clayton is made to feel the pain of the electric chair over and over, and each visitor also gets another sentient copy of Clayton's consciousness trapped in perpetual torture. The copy gets used by vigilantes or others who feel it's okay to hurt it because they think the criminal deserves endless suffering. But what we witness is too much punishment. Even if these people were guilty, we rightly have laws against cruel and unusual punishment. At the end of Black Museum, when Nish gets her revenge on Haynes, she's throwing his same too terrible punishment back at him. So she's continuing the cruel cycle. USS Callister is also like this, showing Daly suffering his own cruel punishment. Exit game! Exit game! In both Black Museum and Callister, the episodes seem to be encouraging us to feel good about the ending. We might initially feel satisfied that these guys truly deserved it and got their just desserts after torturing so many others. But having seen everything else in Black Museum, as well as White Christmas, or even White Bear, which isn't about cookies but still deals with excessive punishment, we might have learned by now that it's not about whether someone's done something bad enough to warrant terrible punishment. It's about us being human enough not to treat any consciousness like that. Meanwhile, the other reason these terrible abuses happen in Black Mirror is that people sign up to technologies way too quickly. Look at Carrie in Black Museum. When she's in a coma, her husband says he needs to think over the question of whether to put her consciousness as a passenger into his brain. But she says yes immediately. I'd have to think about it. Carrie's done her thinking. 
Later, Jack's new girlfriend Emily doesn't think twice about moving Carrie's consciousness into the monkey to get her out of the way. I say yes. Well, she's done her thinking. And in episodes about other technologies, Archangel, Playtest, Entire History of You, Be Right Back, again, people don't think before signing up for something that might be irreversible. Maybe this is because on some level, we still think of the digital world as not quite real, as something that can always be changed, deleted, with no real repercussions. But as technology gets more advanced, this may not be the case. The name cookie is a pretty clever word for a sentient digital copy because it makes us think of the term for information that websites store on your computer to remember your identity or preferences. People often consent to a website's cookie policy when they're browsing, without really deeply understanding what a cookie is. So Black Mirror takes this yummy yet unimportant sounding name to, again, sneakily talk about something important. Jesus Christ, Clay is your soul. It comes as a surprise to us when Clayton's wife uses the word soul here, because the show generally avoids calling these copies that. It's just a cookie or something equally diminutive. It's just a computer simulation or something. Then why does he need your permission? Nish's mother is the first one to honestly give the concept the weight it deserves. If this copy of us is sentient, conscious, us in every way except for the body, then essentially this is the same as a soul. The more we mix these fundamental parts of ourselves with flawed, untested technology from creators or companies with self-serving motives, the more we could be playing with fire when it comes to our souls and effectively our immortal afterlife. San Junipero is a kind of heaven for our consciousness to go to after we die. But we could just as easily be signing up for an eternal hell. And how ironic would it be if it turned out there were no God-given afterlife or hell, but through our technology and our desires to live forever, we created a digital hell and then trapped our minds there for all eternity. This hell wouldn't be punishment for any terrible sins, really, only for leaping without looking, not thinking it through. At the same time as we're talking about consciousnesses as people, we should be careful to distinguish between these cookies, that is, a sentient copy of a consciousness, and a computer simulation. A sentient digital copy of our consciousness is different from a bit of code that only looks and seems a lot like us. So Be Right Back doesn't really fit into our discussion of cookies, because that android is a recreation of how a deceased person looked and sounded, which isn't the consciousness of that person. Just get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! You're not enough of him! You are nothing! You're nothing! As we see in Metalhead, we need to be very wary of humanizing AI and robotics, of automatically thinking of robots as people, when robots don't necessarily have the same priorities and values as people. Google's robotic dogs might look really cute for their resemblance to animals, but to make the mistake of finding the unrelenting killer dog in Metalhead cute would be very quickly fatal. So we can't lump together computers or avatars with consciousness that's somehow able to be uploaded or transferred. The souls versus code distinction is getting at a fundamental mystery at the core of who we are. If there is some self in us that could be preserved when separated from our body, how do we protect it? How do we distinguish between a digitally replicated soul and a string of code that simply imitates human behavior? So Black Mirror makes us think very hard about whether we'd ever really want to copy our own consciousness. We see terrifying abuse and rights violations as the society of Black Mirror struggles to figure out whether these cookies are people. The way the timeline of Black Mirror plays out suggests we could be looking at a fate where copying our consciousness is the only future of our people, the resting place for our eternal souls, the only way that humankind will even live on if we manage to make this world uninhabitable for our bodies, which is sadly a lot less far-fetched than it once sounded. Our technology could make it possible for our consciousness to live forever, but this may not be a good thing if we blindly trust in unregulated technologies and untrustworthy companies instead of laws and human rights. Hopefully Black Mirror has taught us by now that if we do ever acquire this technology to put our consciousness somewhere else, we'd better think long and hard about it first, or we could end up trapped in a hell of our own making. Some might say that five years with me is punishment enough. Thanks to Swift Rick Gear for sponsoring this video. As you know, we're a little obsessed with their hoodies. Like, look at that one. That is gorgeous. 
Or how about this extra warm, nobody belongs anywhere hoodie to protect you from both literal and existential shivers. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV. There's also this one that features what looks like every Rick and Morty character ever. Click the link in our description below to go to swiftrickgear.com and check out some of the coolest Rick and Morty gear out there. Get 25% off with our special discount code. Also, leave a comment for swiftrickgear.com about any merch you'd like to see that's not yet on their site. 